Welcome to another video about my Dan Torch Plasma CNC table. In this video, we're going to show how we went about making a homemade water table. Dine Torch does provide detailed drawings on constructing your own water table, or you can buy the one directly from them when you buy the table, or I'm sure they'll sell you one afterwards. I believe theirs is made out of stainless steel and costs somewhere around seven or eight hundred dollars. We went for a cheaper solution of using galvanized steel. We got a local shop to fabricate up the piece and to use the, the large break uh, just to fold the four sides and we did the welding ourselves. Obviously because the, uh, the steel is galvanized you have to be a little bit careful when you do weld it. Uh, you can use a specialist rod or you can just coat the, uh, the weld afterwards so it doesn't corrode too badly. The slats were a little bit too long as you can see and the size were a little bit high so we had to modify that. What we did was we just ground the slots out with an angle grinder, just mark them off against the, uh, the table, just took a few minutes. We welded in a ball valve in the bottom of the table so we could drain it at a later date. Just really simple, it's only a small water table and we can drain that straight out and then treat the water as necessary. After welding the corners we did coat them with uh, clear silicone just for the belt and braces. So to shorten the slats, what we did was clamp three or four together and just took a, an angle grinder and just ground them off three or four at a time. Just as a, a little aside, that little yellow cart behind there is from a company called Princess Auto that we have in Canada. Uh, it's been really good. It's hydraulic, lifts up to 600 pounds and we've been using that for loading steel on and off the table. Obviously it's a small small shop that we have, we don't have a forklift but this seems to have worked out really well for us. I think it was about $300. A little bit expensive but it's coming really really useful. So we're just going to fit the slats back into the table. We retained the the long slat across the center uh, that will keep the top slats rigid um, we did have to prop it up at each corner just to, to bring it up so it did engage properly in the uh, the top slats. And you can see that on one of the later clips. So I'm just going to speed this up so you don't have to watch putting all the slats back in. So this is the completed water table with the drain in, in the bottom, middle slat, and you can see those little bars we put under the end just to hold up either end, and we can just pull them out later on. And this is the moment of truth, the first fill. It does take uh, a few minutes to fill, and we didn't have any leaks, you'd be pleased to know. This is the final water level. It's about an inch from the top of the water table, which should be adequate. That's going to catch a lot of the, the dust and dirt. Don't forget to uh, ground the, the table as well. Make sure you bolt or ground nice and firmly on there. Obviously there's lots of electricity around and uh, you want to make sure that's uh, nice and safe. So this is the first cut. We're cutting some quarter inch mild steel plate. 
the Powermax 45 is doing a, a great job and the water table is uh, is really worth the effort and the expense. It's, it makes a huge difference to the, uh, the cutting environment. I plan to do another short video just on the plasma cutter itself and what's needed to run the machine correctly. Uh, I'd like to show you the, the compressor setup as well as the air filters and the air drying system that we've got. The quality of the air going into the plasma card has a, a major effect on cut quality and the consumable life so it's, it's something worth having a, a good look at and obviously you've got to factor in that cost when you put all these things together. You probably notice in the top right corner of the, the plate that we're cutting is the work clamp from the plasma car. What we also did was to bolt an additional cable directly to the slats, just in case we ever forget the work clamp, then we'll have that as an additional backup. Well, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more, then please go ahead and subscribe to my channel.